Jaya Shabad Varna Mahang Sabari Jagacharya Asta Tara Sata Shishimad His Divine Grace Sila A.C. Bhaktivinanda Swami Sila Prabhupada Ki Anantakota Vaishnavanda Ki Jaya Namacharya Sila Harida Stakura Ki Jaya Iskand Founder Acharya Sila Prabhupada Ki Jaya Prem Zagho Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhupada Chan and Jashir Vaiti Gadan Harish Vasati Gaur Bhaktivinanda Ki Jaya Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopinas Chamakun Radha Kun Giri Govaran Ki Jaya Shiva Navadam Ki Jai, Sri Maya Ponavidam Ki Jai, Ganga Maya Ki Jai, Jamuna Maya Ki Jai, Tulsa Devi Ki Jai, Bhakti Devi Ki Jai, Samaveda Bhakti Vinda Ki Jai, Transcendental Book Distribution Ki Jai, Hodinam Sankirtan Ki Jai, Go Premanandi, How Glorious Some of Devotees, How Glorious Some of Devotees, How Glorious Some of Devotees, How Glorious, How Glorious, Shri Shri Guru and Shri Gauranga. Can someone get a book for me? Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So, reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 10, Text 31. <coughs> Evam Vidha Gadantinam Sa Gira Pura Yositam Narigsane Nabhinandan Samitena Yayao Hari Evam Vidha Garani Gada excuse me Evam Vidha Gadantinam Sagira Purayositam Nariksanani Nabhirandan Sasmitena Yayao Hari Evam Vidha Garantinam Sagira Purayositam Narikshane Nabhinandam Sasmatena Yayao Hari Evam Vidha Garantinam Sagara Purayositam Narikshane Abhinandam Sasmitena Yayahari Evangara Garantina Sagira Prayositam Narikshane Navinandan Sasmitena Yayao Hari Yavangadha Garantinam Sagira Prayositam Ivan Vidha Garantina 
Sagira Purayo Sitam Nirikshane Nabhinanda Sasmitena Yayahari Matajis Evam Vidha, in this way, Ganandhinam, thus praying and talking about him, Sa, he, the Lord, Gira, of words, Purayositam, of the ladies of the capital, Narigsanena, by his grace of glancing over him, over them. Avinandan and greeting them. Sasmitena with a smiling face. Yayao departed. Hari, the personality of Godhead. Translation. While the ladies of the capital of Astinapur were greeting him and talking in this way, the Lord, smiling, accepted their good greetings and, casting the grace of his glance over them, he departed from the city. Text 32. Ajata Satro Putanam Gopitaya Madhut Swisa Parebya Sankila Snehad Prakuncha Chatur Anginam Ganim Translation and purport by His Divine Grace. Hila Prabhupada Ki. Maharaj Yudhisthira, although no one's enemy, engaged four divisions of defense horse, elephant, chariot, and army to accompany Lord Krishna, the enemy of the Asuras, demons. The Maharaj did this because of the enemy and also out of affection for the Lord. Purport. Natural defense measures are horses and elephants combined with chariots and men. Horses and elephants are trained to move to any part of the hills or forests and plains. The charioteers could fight with many horses and elephants by the strength of powerful arrows, even up to the standard of the Brahmastra, similar to the modern atomic weapons. Maharaj Yudhisthira knew well that Krishna is everyone's friend and well-wisher, yet, and yet there, are, there were asuras who were by nature envious of the Lord. So out of fear of attack from others and out of affection also, he engaged all varieties of defense forces as bodyguards of Lord Krishna. If required, Lord Krishna himself was sufficient to defend himself from the attack of others who counted the Lord as their enemy. But still, he accepted all the arrangements made by Maharaj Yudhisthira because he could not disobey the king who was his elder cousin. The Lord plays the part of a subordinate in his transcendental sporting, and thus sometimes he puts himself in the care of Yasoda Mata for his protection in his so-called helplessness of childhood. That is the transcendental lila, or pastime of the Lord, the basic principle for all transcendental exchanges between the Lord and his devotees is exhibited to enjoy a transcendental bliss for which there is no comparison, even up to the level of Brahmananda. 
Omigyana Timarandasya, Gyananjana Salakaya, Chakshun Militam Jena, Tazmai Sri Gurave Namaha, Ukram Kotavachalan, Pongun Lung Hayate Grim, Yat Kripa Tadaham Mande, Shigurum Dinataranam, Vancha Kapa Tubyascha, Kripa Sindhu Bhyevacha, Potitanam Pavanavya Vaisnavi Bhyo Namo Namaha, Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhupada Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sivasari Gaur Bhaktivinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So this great king, Maharaj Yudhisthira, was an extraordinary personality. First we know that he was a Noted to be a person who never lied, which is amazing. And now we're seeing he's, he had no enemy. He was not an enemy towards anyone. Others may have been an enemy towards him, but he didn't see anyone as an enemy, which is also quite amazing. Because as we know through the Mahabharata, many, many persons really disturbed his life. For instance, Duryodhana, he tried to kill all the Pandavas and his mother. But he didn't see him as an enemy. Inconceivable. Uh, Ashwatthama killed his son and his four nephews. Dushashan tried to disrobe Draupadi, a goddess, his wife. It's amazing. He didn't see any of them as an enemy. How is that possible? Because he was a completely pure, transcendental devotee of the Lord who saw that everybody is a spirit soul. He didn't see uh, Duryodhana offending him. He saw a soul beyond the covering that's just moved by the modes of material nature. The Yorin is an eternal servant of Krishna. Ashvatama also. Dushashan. They're all eternal servants of Krishna. So he saw beyond the covering, the facade, the maya, the modes of nature. So in this way, he didn't see anyone as an enemy but saw everyone as part of Krishna. Very, very elevated level of consciousness. Yeah. Yudhisthira Maharaj is the type of person that we would all want to be around a lot yeah. to get purification and also get some of that, that consciousness. So this is a Rajarsi, a saintly king, didn't see anyone as an enemy. In Kali Yuga, this is the age of quarrel and hypocrisy. So many enemies uh, over little things. So much violence in, in, in families. Domestic violence is a huge, huge problem. Enemies within their own family. Prabhupada told of one story of a Two young men, brothers, they got in some quarrel. They were arguing back and forth and it it turned into violence. And one of the brothers killed the other one. So then went to court, the one that killed the other, he had went to court and, and the judge said, put him to death. And the, and the, the father said, he pleaded to the judge, judge, please, one of my sons is dead. I only have one left. Please let him live. All right. So he lived. But just see, brothers become enemies. Material world. Icha dvesa samudhvena dvonamamena bharata That all living entities are born into delusion, bewildered by, by the dualities that arise from desire and hate. Born in this world with hate. Kali Yuga. Very degraded age. But Jadbharat, 
he uh, interestingly says to King Rahugana that the greatest enemy is the uncontrolled mind, not others. The enemy is within. The enemy is within. And Srila Prabhupada, he makes an, an interesting statement that uh, the weapon that can destroy this, uh, this enemy is disobedience. The weapon that can destroy the uncontrolled mind is disobedience. You know, people, they obey the dictates of the mind, thinking that's them. That's, they think that I am the mind, I am the body, I'm the intelligence, this is all me. So they obey the dictates of the mind. But we're not the mind. Evam bude parang budva samstyab jhatmanam atmana jahi satin mahabaho kamarupam drasana. Krishna says, knowing oneself to be transcendental to the material senses and mind, which should steady oneself by carefully engaging in Krishna consciousness and slay this formidable enemy known as lust, the mind. So the, the lust is sitting. So much contamination is sitting within the mind. So disobedience. Don't obey the mind, the dictates of the mind. But who do we obey? Krishna. We obey Krishna. And we're getting so many wonderful instructions from Krishna. So if we just follow, if we just obey the instructions of Krishna, we're going to be doing really good. We're going to be doing really good. We just obey Krishna and, and, and don't obey the mind. It's not our friend. It's the enemy. Yeah. An intelligent person won't take the dictates of, a, of an enemy and follow the instructions of an enemy. Right? Not very intelligent. Krishna, he's our best friend, and he's given us so many wonderful instructions. If we follow the instructions of our best friend, Krishna, then uh, life will be wonderful. So what is the nature of the, of the mind? The nature of the mind, it's, it's hankering and it's lamenting. Hankering for that which we want, and lamenting for that, uh, or hankering, or hankering for that which we want, and we're lamenting for that which we lose. We lose something that we want to keep, and we lament it when we lose it. Hankering and lamenting. This is the nature of the mind. But we can also uh, use this hankering, hankering to serve Krishna. We want to become pure servants of Krishna, so we can hanker for that. And this is a, a nice way to hanker. And generally, people are all hankering for so many material things, a house and car and girlfriend, boyfriend, so many things they're hankering for. But these things, they all cause bondage to the material world. But a devotee is hankering to worship Krishna, to become a pure servant of Krishna, to, to give this message of Krishna to others. Like Prabhupada, here in Los Angeles, they had huge, huge book distribution results. And the devotees, the leaders, they went to Prabhupada's room thinking, oh, Prabhupada's going to be so pleased. Such big results in book distribution. So Prabhupada heard the big numbers and Prabhupada said, now double it. So Prabhupada was pleased, certainly he was pleased, but he wasn't sentimental. Prabhupada was hankering that everybody get an opportunity to hear about Krishna. Prabhupada was hankering also. And lamenting also is there in Krishna consciousness. 
We lament that could not serve Krishna. Hari Hari Vipale Janama Kainu. This is Prabhupada's favorite song. He says, Oh Lord Hari, I've wasted this human form of life having not worshipped Radha and Krishna. I've willingly drank in poison. So Naratam Das Thakur, he's lamenting that I, although I have this rare human form of life, I haven't utilized it in the service of Krishna. So we could lament like that. I, I'm so unfortunate. I had this opportunity. I'm here in the association of devotees. I'm chanting Hare Krishna, but I'm still uh, not pleasing Krishna. I'm still not a pure soul. Still so much material contamination. So we could lament like that. And Prabhupada said, lamentation means purification. This type of lamentation is purification. Yeah. So we could lament in that way. In this way, we, we subdue the, the, the enemy of the mind. We're trying to turn the mind from an enemy into a devotee. It's a big challenge. Big challenge. <laughs> Not easy. But if you get something easily, then you also give it up easily. Right? But if you find there's something that's very difficult to, to achieve, but I really want it, and you, give, you just give it all you've got to achieve that, once you achieve it, you'll never give it up. So we're trying to achieve Krishna. Very difficult to achieve Krishna. Nayam atma pravichayena labdho. Namedaya nabuhana shutena. That Krishna, he cannot be attained by, by uh, vast intelligence, giving, giving scholarly discourses, even by much hearing. But he can be attained by only those persons whom he chooses. So who does he choose? Tesam sthartyutanam bhajitam pritapurvakam tadami buddhi yogam tam yenamam upiyantite To those who are constantly devoted to me and worship me with love, I give them the understanding by which they can come to me. So this is, this is what Krishna wants to see in us. He's asking for a lot. There's one uh, scholar of the Bhagavad Gita, so-called scholar, translate the Bhagavad Gita. In the commentary where Krishna says, Krishna says, Sarvajaman Paritija, Mami Kam Saranamaja. In his commentary, he says, Krishna is asking for too much. The rascals. These are the rascals that are translating Bhagavad Gita. The fool doesn't know that if we surrender to Krishna, then Krishna gives himself. So we come out uh, way ahead if we surrender to Krishna. So here in this verse also, it's interesting that uh, Yudhisthir, he has all these soldiers and, and all this military to protect Krishna. Does Krishna need protection? No. But this is love. Yudhisthir is uh, Krishna's elder cousin. So he feels it is his duty to protect his younger cousin. Prabhupada says in one purport that the highest manifestation of the mercy of Krishna is when he becomes subordinate to his devotee. Krishna likes to become subordinate to his devotee. Just like in the Nectar Devotion, it's mentioned that when Krishna went to Hastinapur for the Rajasuya sacrifice, and Yudhisthira was there, and Krishna came up in his chariot, and Yudhisthira was there in his chariot, and they, they came together, and, and Krishna got down to offer respects to his elder cousin. And, but Yudhisthira understood, he knew Krishna's God, so he got down to also offer respects 
to Krishna, but Krishna was faster. So he offered respects to Yudhisthira. See, this is Krishna. He likes he likes to be subordinate, just like this amazing pastime here, Dhamadhar Lila. It's wonderful. Yasoda's binding Krishna. Who could bind God? Nobody can bind God. But if love is there, he could be bound by that love. And that was the only way that she could bind Krishna. But she had tried. She'd gotten so much rope, she couldn't bind Krishna. And she got more rope. Still, two inches or two fingers. They say both. <laughs> too short. Too short. Got more rope. Still, two fingers too short. Got more rope. And now it became a scene in the village there. The, the Madhajis were saying, Yasoda, you've gotten so much rope, you can't bind Krishna. You try and so you can't bind Krishna, can't you see? You've gotten so much rope, you can't bind Krishna. She was determined, no, no, he's done wrong, I'm going to punish him, I'm going to bind him. Even if I have to get all the rope in Vrindavan, I'm going to bind him. So she's put in so much endeavor to bind Krishna. And Krishna sees that. Finally he sees she's trying so hard in her service you know, to to punish me. She's feeling it's her, her duty to punish her son who had done some wrong. So then he decided, okay, you can bind me. So these two fingers represent the mercy of Krishna. Without his mercy, we can't do anything. And the other one is the determination of the devotee. So we have to be very determined to attain Krishna. And we have to pray. We have to pray for the for the mercy of Krishna. But Krishna, he very much likes being subordinate. He enjoys being subordinate. Prabhupada tells of a story of a prime minister, Prime Minister Gladstone of England. He was in his office and he was uh, supposed to meet with another big leader from another country. So this other leader, he showed up on time. And the secretary said, oh, please uh, wait in the lounge. He's a little busy now. So this leader, he's waiting. And he's waiting. And he's waiting. An hour goes by. And he's like, what's going on? So he goes to the prime minister's office. And he just peeks in to see what's happening. And the prime minister is on his hands and knees and his grandson is on his back and his grandson is riding him like a horsey. And the prime minister is having a great time. So this person was amazed. <laughs> so this is pleasure to be subordinate to, to someone who loves you. So there's so much love that Mother Yasoda had for Krishna. Just like when when Kaliya had Krishna bound. How long was Krishna bound? Two hours. So Mother Yasoda is just like, I mean, this is just like torture. So what does she do? She, she enters into the lake to save him, to protect him. She's still thinking, he's just my little boy. And then she stopped and she faints. So much love. I remember when I was a youngster living in Texas, I had heard that this uh, lady was in her yard there and a car was backing up and her child was going to get run over. But she wasn't so close that she can grab the child. So what did she do? She picked up the car. So much love, the adrenaline flew so much that she picked up the car. Why? How was she able to, how is that possible? 
love. Love. We can do amazing things with love. It's like Prabhupada had so much love for Krishna, so much love for his spiritual master that he did practically the impossible. What he did is just inconceivable. It's like there was a, a, a Newsweek article. The 10 people that became successful, very successful, multimillionaires after the age of 60. Prabhupada was one of them. Now if they would have had after 70, Prabhupada may have been the only one. There was 10 that were after 60. Prabhupada made his success after 70. So many temples, so much, so many men, so much money, so much. It's inconceivable because the love that he had for Krishna, that he had for his spiritual master. So this is the, the power. This is the power of love. We're able to do amazing things with this the love for Krishna. And if one does attain this love for Krishna, then one is no more, no more attracted to society, friendship, and love. Even it's said that if you want to continue on with society, friendship, and love, then don't go. Don't go and see Krishna on the bank of the Yamuna playing his flute. Because if you do, you'll no longer be attracted to the so-called pleasures of this world. There was one interesting book distribution pastime. One Mataji was distributing books in, uh, in the airport, of course, many years ago when we had the airports. And she was talking to one young man. And finally, the young man understood that he, she's a Hare Krishna. And he said, don't give me any of your cookies. Oh, I don't have any cookies. I ran out. Oh, good. Because, you know, you guys gave some, one of my friends these cookies. And now he's not chasing girls anymore. He became a vegetarian. And he's, he's became very unusual. Yeah. So she said, well, that's good. That's good. He said, he said, well, yeah, that's good. But I'm not ready for that. Don't give me any of your cookies. Yeah. So this is not only in the power of seeing Krishna hearing Krishna's name. If one hears the names of Krishna, if one sees Krishna, one becomes detached. Also, if one takes Krishna prasadam, one becomes purified. So all these things purify the living entity. Yeah. And this is what we want. We want to become pure again. This is our natural position yeah, to be pure. Just like the water coming from the sky, the distilled water the rain water is pure, it hits the, but it's the dirt becomes muddy. So we were pure, we become muddy now in connection with the modes of nature. But we can become pure again by this connection with Krishna. Bhakti Purushana Bhava Varaktir Anyatu Chaisa Triki Ekakala Prapadyamana Yathasna Tusti Pusti Sunagaina Nugasa. That by rendering devotional service to Krishna, three things simultaneously occur. We develop love for Krishna. Won't that be nice? Huh? Love for Krishna. To be a normal soul again. Won't that be nice? To be a pure lover of Krishna. So this happens just by rendering devotional service. Yeah. Now the service has to be on a certain level, a high level. No motivation. No material motivation. In the material world, everybody has some motivation. Like I was speaking to one devotee yesterday who, who uh, works with doctors. And he said, these doctors, they're all just thinking of themselves. They just want money. They don't care about their patients. It's business. He's, he's been with them for years and it's just business. They just want money. They can care less about the people. If they don't have money, they don't even want to treat them. Just selfishness. Yeah. 
Previously, we would grow up thinking doctors are compassionate. Huh? Hippocratic oath. Yeah. You know the oath? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's supposed to be there to help people. They become doctors to help people. But no, it's to make more money. Yeah. So, we're trying to serve Krishna to please Krishna, to please the devotees. You, know, you come to Krishna consciousness, there's a lot of opportunity to live a nice life. You know? yeah. Nice prasadam, right? Nice facilities. Yeah. Now we've become a little more wealthy. I remember when I joined, we were very poor. My bed, when I joined, was a sheet. All the brahmacharis were sleeping on sheets. We d couldn't even afford a mat. That was our bed. <laughs> we had one shower, 25 brahmacharis. We had 35. Se we had 30 seconds to take a shower. You know that was cold. You couldn't. You couldn't wait for a warm. <laughs> it was just cold, quick. 30 seconds. You know, so we were very poor. Now we've become a little more wealthy. You know. You know. The brahmacharis now, they, you know, the bhaktas, they all got iPhones, you know. <laughs> Computers, you know, it's like, it's changed a little bit now. <laughs> so, we shouldn't uh, try to enjoy that which has been given to us. We should always be grateful and, and just try to serve Krishna. So we attain love for Krishna, we become detached this is another uh, benefit of engaging in devotional service. We become detached from this material world. We become attached to Krishna. And the last one, we get realization. We get realization of Krishna. Wouldn't it be nice to have realization, deep realization of Krishna? Yeah. Prabhupada says the quickest way to get realization of Krishna is to preach Krishna consciousness. He says this in one purport. This is the quickest way to get realization of Krishna. Why? Because this activity of preaching is very, very dear to Krishna. You know, he comes himself and preaches the Bhagavad Gita. Wonderful preaching. And then he comes as Lord Chaitanya and he preaches. He preaches to his devotees. Yare deka tahari ka Krishna upades amara agyaya guru hanatari days. To the Korma Brahmana, he told them, instruct everyone of the teachings of Krishna as they are given in the Bhagavad Gita and the Srimad Bhagavatam. In this way you become a spiritual master and liberate everyone in the land. So this is why we get quick realization of Krishna if we go out and preach Krishna consciousness because Krishna's pleased yeah. Krishna's pleased by this activity so is there any question comment I think here's the microphone thank you very much for the one for cross Prabhu so you were mentioning that uh, uh, because Yudhisthira Maharaj he was pure so even uh, when he saw that his wife Jopadi was insulted by Dushashan, so he didn't take any action. But on the other hand, I heard that uh, when you see some devotees uh, is insulted by some others, then one should immediately you know, uh, get up and take some action. So how can we, uh, you know, balance those two situations? Yeah, very good, very good question. Good point. Not only was he the wife of Yudhisthira, she was a pure devotee, just a goddess. So one may wonder, well, why? You know, Bhima is there. Bhima could have killed everybody in there. He sure did want to. <laughs> he wanted to. <laughs> He was, because Yudhisthira, he was the older brother. He was looking at Yudhisthira, just get some notice. 
Can it, can it kill him? Calm down. Because it was, a, it was a big question there. Because he was gambling. He had gambled away. Tropity. Yeah. Gambled away himself. So it's a very, this is a very <laughs> intricate, difficult thing to understand. But what's interesting here is that Draupadi, she was trying to keep the garment, the sari on herself with her own strength. But Dushashan, he's a kshatriya. He's powerful. So she's trying. And she finally, she just understands this is not possible. So then with the other hand, Hey, Govinda! And then, the sari becomes an incarnation of Krishna. First time ever <laughs> that a sari becomes Krishna. So he's pulling and pulling, 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 and just sari, just unlimited sari. He got tired. He's pulling so much sari. He got tired. So their pure devotee. So maybe you just here had some understanding that Krishna will take care. So it's like Yudhisthira Maharaj is just waiting for Krishna to take some action. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah. Yes, Archita Prabhu has a, something to say about this. This is what it means to be a pure devotee. The pure devotees, are at every moment, they're doing exactly what Krishna wants them to do. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it even makes them oppose each other. Let's like Bhishma Dev opposing the Pandavas, who <laughs> he loves. They're, they're his most beloved, you know, descendants. But by Krishna's arrangement, he opposes them, and they oppose him, and they kill him. <laughs> so that's why it's not so easy to understand the actions of the Lord or the Lord's devotees. We have to hear from pure devotees what it means. If we try to speculate and figure it out ourselves, we'll just come to a point where we lose faith. Just like when you look at the situation of the big demons like Hiranyakashipu and Ravana. They were, they were sent practically by Krishna from the spiritual world so that he could fight them. But in the meantime, they killed so many people, so many sages, so many... So you may wonder, what kind of God is that? How could he allow these demons to kill so many people? You see, it's not so easy to understand. When Krishna does something, it's not easy to understand. You can't always rationalize it or figure it out. You have to accept the verdict of other pure devotees who know what's going on. So in this particular case... Krishna is actually inspiring so many pure devotees to do different things. He's inspiring Yudhisthira not to act. He inspired Bhima saying he wanted to act. He actually got mad at Yudhisthira. He actually wanted to beat up his own brother because he wanted to do something. But because the etiquette was there, the Chachari has to follow the king, he, he remained calm at that point. He inspired Bhishma Dev not to say anything. Bhishma Dev didn't even oppose. To say, hey, stop, Dushashana. He was in the audience. He was in the audience. So it's not so easy to understand how all these different pure devotees are acting differently. But what it means to be a pure devotee is that at every moment, you are doing exactly what Krishna wants you to do. Even though it may seem immoral, like Arjun killing Karna or whatever, they're doing exactly what Krishna wants them to do. Thank you. Any other question or comment? Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada, oh, there's a, is there one? Was there? No. She's a Prabhupada Ki Jai. Thank you. 